Everyone ready? Because I'd yeah. like to call the May 22nd, 2014 meeting of the Planning Board to order. The Board will be considering tonight's agenda in the following order. First, approval of the minutes from the May 6th Planning Board meeting. Second, Perm Highland Subdivision Amendment. Third, Jordan Subdivision Amendment, followed by the Well, a 44-seat restaurant site plan and Jordan Farm Stand site plan amendment, followed by the Harvest Lane Private Road Amendment, then the All Wives Farm and Fish Market site plan, then the BA District 100-seat restaurant zoning amendment, followed by public comment on items not on tonight's agenda, and then adjournment. So, first item, approval of the minutes. And these would be the minutes from May 6th, the special meeting that was held. Anyone have any comments, any questions about those minutes? I move we approve the minutes as, as submitted. Thank you. Do we have a second? Um, I saw Pete first. And any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That has passed. Okay, next item on the agenda is the Perham Highland Subdivision Amendment. Janice and Rick Perham are requesting an amendment to the Highland Subdivision to amend the building envelope for the lot located at 3 Heritage Court where the corner of the garage is not located in the building envelope. The application will be reviewed for compliance with section 16-2-5 amendments to previously approved subdivisions. And um, the procedure is a little different on this one because this is on our consent agenda, meaning that if the board would like to discuss the application, then a motion would be need to be made by, um, by the board member to put this onto our regular agenda. Otherwise, um, the motion for approval would then be in order. So at this time, um, would you like to step forward and introduce yourself and give a brief summary? Um, my name's uh, Richard Parham, wife Janice. Uh, we built a house uh, 14 years ago in the Highland Subdivision, which is off of Hunts Point Road. Uh, Cove View is cul de sac Road, and then we're off of that one. There's three lots in our, on our road. Um, the original uh, site plan showed a building envelope that pretty much followed the setback from the wetlands. Uh, with really no dimensions on it. Um, come to find out, we've uh, got an offer on our house, and they did a new uh, evaluation of the building envelope and found we were, the garage was about seven or eight feet over the, out of the envelope, uh, the original uh, plan review. So um, we've redrawn the uh, building envelope to encompass the garage, and we're still within the 25 foot setback from, uh, from the wetlands. So I'm asking for an amendment to the building, uh, to the site plan uh, to, for the new building envelope. Okay, thank you. Does anyone have any questions for the applicant? Okay, then we'll keep this on the consent agenda. Then would anyone like to make a motion? Um, Henry. Be it ordered to based on the request, it, the request submitted and the facts presented, the application of Janice and Rick Aaron for the amendment to the Highland subdivision to reverse the building, to revise the building envelope for the lot located at Three Heritage Court, where the corner of the garage is not located in the building envelope, be approved as a consent agenda item. Second. Second. Thank you, Caroline. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? And the motion is passed. Thank you very much. Very much. The next item will be the Jordan subdivision amendment. I'd like to recuse myself from the next two items on the agenda since they're both related to Jordan's property. Okay. That'll be fine. Thank you. So the next item is the Jordan subdivision amendment and this item will be addressed in the following format. The town planner will provide an overview of the item after which the applicant 
or his representative will summarize any changes to the plan. The public then is welcome to comment on the amendment, and after public comment, the board may be begin discussion and will conclude with a uh, motion for the board to consider. Maureen. Sure. Since last night, last month's meeting, um, the original application was for lots two and three to be amended. The lot one has now been added to the application, so all three lots are now part of this approval. Lot one really needed to be added because they had received approval to be on a public water line, and in fact, they're served by a well. And if they had not amended their plan at some point in the future, if they tried to sell their house, there might be a problem with the sale. So it's, it's an opportunity to clean that up now at the same time. Uh, the other th difference is that all the improvements are proposed to be completed as part of this approval. The original approval actually divided things up into phase one and phase two, and we are clearly in phase two now. So the plans have been revised so that everything that needs to be done has to be done. And finally, there is a recommendation that a performance guarantee be uh, acquired to make sure the improvements are constructed and inspected as they have been approved by the board. Thank you. I'd like to make a presentation about the changes. Good evening, members of the board. I'm Bob Metcalf with Mitchell and Associates, and here on behalf of Phil Jordan and Chelsea Hughes and the application. Uh, Maureen, I'm going to ask, do you have a, a laser pointer, which I managed to realize I left mine sitting on my desk? Do you have Oh, it's in the bag that's right at your feet. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, what I'll do is I'll walk you through the changes we've made since the last time we we're here for the completeness. Uh, as Maureen had indicated, the original subdivision plan had references to phase one and phase two improvements, and all those notes have been taken off with the exception of one they were asked to re retain on the plan, and that was in regards to any further division of lot 30 or the farm parcel that public water would have to be extended, and that note has been retained on the, uh, the plan. Other than that, all the improvements that were on the plan, uh, originally, all those reference notes for phase two elements have been taken off so that the improvements that will be made will be the paving of the first 50 feet of deer run as required, the monumentation that has to be set on that location, the extension of the utilities, as well as the construction of the portion of hockey pond. And basically, when we were on the site walk that day, we talked about the turning radius for emergency vehicles to have the ability when they're backing up or pulling in to the further end of Hockey Pond as well as onto the farm road, the ability for that turning radius for the WB-50 or the fire 40 or the fire truck to be able to make that maneuver and to verify that with the fire department before completion of the work. So those notes were changed. Um, the other one that was added on there was at the northerly end of Hockey Pond being main maintained open at all times so that it's, Nothing's parked in there. It's plowed during the winter months in order for the vehicles to be able to have that access. And that note was number 11 that was added to the plan. And it's also in the grading and drainage plan, which is uh, number six on that, the grading and drainage plan. Uh, since we are going to on-site public well water, uh, the uh, well setbacks from the septic systems have all been identified. The 100-foot setback location is on the subdivision plan as well as on the grading and drainage plan. Getting into the grading and drainage plan, uh, there were several comments that were made uh, from the town engineer in, her, in the previous letter that we had revised when we were back the, before you for the completeness meeting, as well as a couple of subsequent comments that came out in the, uh, the recent letter. And we've added notes on there. Uh, when we'd added the trees on that we'd identified on the site walk, they were being retained. Just the line weights when uh, Mr. Harding was reviewing the uh, colored crossing, uh, they couldn't quite determine the contour lines and the tree line and everything. So we've clarified that, added a note to the plan uh, that references the improvements that have to be made in order to allow the positive drainage flow down the ditch line into that culvert and then the treatment of the outlet end of the culvert. Uh, as you'll note on the plan, we have identified the location of the trees that we discussed on site. Um, based on the location of those trees, we've made a minor modification to the driveway location that serves lot two and lot three so that we can get past the location where the trees are so we don't impact the root system. And also one of the other mo modifications that occurred as a result of that 
is the ditch line between the driveway on lot two and lot three is now going to be conveyed by culvert rather than a ditch line so we can protect the root system in that area. Uh, on this plan as well, we've added note six, which addresses the training mo movement for the fire truck at the farther northerly end. And the other comment the uh, Mr. Harding had was making sure the plans were stamped by an engineer, and all the plans have been stamped by an engineer, and we also have a stamp survey plan. I dropped that off with Maureen this evening so that you have that. Uh, those were the changes that occurred from the completeness meeting and uh, subsequent to the site walk that we had, and we have to answer any question. Did you just address um, part of the uh, town engineer's comments was uh, the town standard of 2.5 inch oh. base pavement thickness? Yes, that had been changed, but somewhere along the line when we went to print the plan, the numbers didn't change, and that has been corrected, and I've given Maureen a copy of the detail sheet that has that two and a half rather than the two inch. So it's yeah. changed in the plans? Yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Just, yes, I have a question. Mm -hmm. What is the rationale for in what, what was initially called phase two, but um, if there is a phase two and additional development of that open space area of, of installing public water then and not doing it now? It was a cost factor. I say that again? It was a cost factor. And when we went through the original approval, it was because it was potential for the land beyond the pond, which is over here. This open space is protected. It's on the other side of the pond. There's additional land area that has potential. And at that time, when we came through for the first approval, it was with the thought that further development of the property could occur and therefore wanting to have public water extended. I, I guess what, what I don't understand is um, what, if, it's, if it's prohibitively expensive, why even pr promise to do it later? It was a request. And, and not now. It was yeah. a request by this board and through Maureen that any future development of the property, and honestly, I can't remember just how many acres there are on the other side of the pond, that to be able to get out there for fire suppression, that was the reason for requiring public water to serve that portion of the property. Okay. So, okay. That, so that's what I was getting at, and, and I had some questions in the workshop about it. Is it in the public interest to have public water? And it sounds like. That it is um, to the extent for, that for fire, for, correct? Um, for fighting fires, is is that the only reason that it's in the public interest um, to have public water? I, I, I'm just I'm asking because I know it was initially required to have public water on this development, and it yeah. wasn't done. So almost 100 percent of the town is served by the Portland Water District, uh -huh. and I'm a huge proponent of using existing utilities and public water and public sewer are available. In this instance, a family subdivision, there's an interest to save money, and so they have gone with well water. The land- Even though it said public water on the plan? Yeah, they've okay. come back and, and uh -huh. you know, the lots two and three and now even lot one have come back and said, no, we just want to put in a well. But the thing is, when the planning board looks at these large lots that are cr these very large lots, 60 plus acres, and subdivision of only a few acres. Um, we want to make sure we're laying out a logical extension of development if that were to occur. So in this case, um, there was a lot of effort looked at on Deer Run Road because Deer Run Road would logically be how you would access development that would occur north of the pond. Mm -hmm. And that's why at the time the, of the original subdivision approval, Deer Run Road did not have a 50 foot wide right of way. So one of the things that happened is the right-of-way was expanded to 50 feet in anticipation that if there was development in the future, there would be a logical vehicular access point to it. And then the public water was another point that was, that was raised, that we want to be able to, uh, any new development, any new neighborhood north of the pond should be developed according to the best town standards, which is public water, public sewer, public road, et cetera. Gotcha. So the initial requirement was for mandating public water only if there was development north of the road? No, the original development was supposed to have public water. And it's this current application that is amending that to go to well water, purely for cost reasons. And, and it's in the public interest to have public water for fire suppression and also what, to share in the cost of the laying the utility or the 
the, the town I just think floor, public, just I think public water is the best route to go whenever it's available because it is a guaranteed, guaranteed clean, healthful supply of water. And if you look in communities where they haven't had public water and there has been some contamination of the private water supply, inevitably those property owners look to the town to resolve their situation. So for that reason, being a planner who likes to look long term, I like public water. Okay, thanks, Maureen. Are you all set? Um, for now. If I can also help to clarify something for you as well, there is public water was, does come up a distance on Deer Run, and there's a hydrant on Deer Run. There's a hydrant on Deer Run. Okay. Oh, great. So that, really, I was thinking I wanted to ask that. I figured you were pointing that out because yeah. I forgot. Yeah. Okay. So there is a hydrant right there. Yes. Okay. Good. And how many feet is that from the first lot? From the first lot? Looks close. It is relatively close, yeah. and without having a plant sitting in front of the scale, it would be difficult okay. to tell you, but it's probably within about 150 feet or so. Okay, thank you. All set? Yep. Anyone else have any questions? I do need to open this up for a public hearing. Maybe at that point I'll ask the board again if, if anyone does come up. So at this time, if anyone from the public would like to approach to comment on this item, Seeing no one, I'm closing the public hearing, bringing it back to the board. And if, are there any further comments, or should I ask for a motion? I have concerns about changing this to not have public water when it was stipulated the first time around. And given what we've heard about it being in the public interest, it sounds like it's a potential future liability for the town if those wells become contaminated. I think on principle, too, if the site plan said to install public water, it should have been installed. And uh, it's a violation, it's a code violation, to have development that's not consistent with the site plan. I'm wondering if anyone else has those concerns. My only comment to that would be if, um, if this was a mandatory district or there was a man if there was something in an ordinance if there was something there that I could point to to say it's not an option you will because of this ordinance this stipulation then I would be able to advance that argument but at this point I don't really have anything to say you shall do this because though the points the town planner makes very valid and I agree with those points when you're doing long-term range planning. There is nothing that I can point to to tell the applicants they must. But if the other... But, but, but for the original, the existing site plan, the site plan that's on the books right now. Which are, we are, would be amending if we would okay this, right. Right. And I'm not sure if that's code enforcement. I may have to... I see Henry's got a question and no. then go over to Pete. Yeah, I have a question. Um, you studied it because of financial reasons. What, yes. are the, what sort of is the difference between sinking a well, which has to be dug, I presume, and connecting to the town? The amount of ledge that has to be removed in that area to extend the, the, uh, the water line was more costly than actually drilling a well. Well, yes, I, by a great deal or by a little amount. I mean. I mean, it's, it's. I don't remember what the numbers were because I wasn't involved when they changed quarter. that over. Sorry. Okay. I mean, it's, oh, you could come up to. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Um, if you'd like to just come up, you have. You can certainly approach. You are the applicant. You do need to just identify yourself for the record, and then you can give that answer. I'm Chelsea Hughes. My boyfriend and I are trying to build a house at lot three. We got a quote for the road as the original plan and it was $140,000. To the water, to extend? For the road. For the, the road, road itself. I'm sorry, I, I just that you weren't speaking into that. Sorry. For the road itself, we got with water, with the public water lines. We got a quote afterwards as Bob has revised the plan, and it's now $12,000. 12000 Yes. Versus <laughs> One hundred and forty. I see the difference. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Do you attribute that entire difference to just laying the water? Ah, uh, yes. It's a very large difference. Was the entire difference between twelve thousand and a hundred thousand plus 
That was the only change, water and yeah. no water. It was also the short Do you want to come up? <laughs> I'm Phil Jordan. I'm also an applicant. Um, on the corner of Hockey Pond and Deer Run, right where the tan starts, they would actually they would actually have to make a seven foot blast cut right here to bring the, the public water in. And without public water, we wouldn't have to do that. It can just be brought to grade. So it's it's the the majority of the cost was for public water. That's a pretty good explanation. Are you all set? Yes. Yeah, I, I understand Lisa's concern, but at the same time, uh, it sounds like the presence of ledge has vastly complicated matters, even to the point of the grade in the road has been changed because of the otherwise the need to blast uh, out the ledge, where we're looking at, a, at three parcels with no evident development out and beyond. Uh, it seems to me it would be almost uneconomic to extend that public water there. And while all things equal, public water is a good thing, it seems to me in a situation like this that, the, that we can make it clear the town has no obligation to give them water if they're taking this route. But it seems to me a reasonable approach under these particular circumstances. Thank you. I'd, I'd also go back to we did ask that the water be tested because we do have a standard saying water needs to be drinkable. And that came back positive. So I, I am having a hard time finding anything, I'm trying to think quickly, in our ordinance that I can point to to, to say that you shall do this because our ordinance says, even though I do agree it's better planning, but our ordinance doesn't support it. Uh, can I, I just wanted to, can I clear up one thing that um, Maureen mentioned, uh, the potential for a homeowner to come back to the town if the well fails in some way? Does the town actually have any liability in that? I'm not aware that the town has any liability. It's basically when you're presented with citizens, I mean, I can think, I think there was an instance I remember in Gorham, I've seen, heard of instances in other towns, and the towns had no liability, but, you know, you've got five or ten families who live in your town in a desperate situation, and you step up to help. But you could always lay the, the line across the road to make the time until the line is laid. I mean, you've got a hydrant not very far away, so I don't think Any the emergency would be so bad. Liza. So, Peter, are you suggesting um, that we add some language, a condition of approval that says if the private water source fails, the, um, the residents of the subdivision will pay to have the public water ex extended? Well, I, I mean, it sounds like the result that we would all expect to happen. Whether adding a note to that effect would help or not help, I don't know. Um, it certainly would highlight the fact that this has been discussed, considered, and the applicants are, would not be looking to the town for, for water. I, I think that's a great solution, compromise solution, to add that language. Okay. Peter, you do agree with that? Sure. Okay. Two? And I'm going to... I don't really agree with it. Okay. I don't really see the necessity for it. I mean, if the, if the wells are bad, they're going to have to figure out what to do no matter what. I don't know why it would be, have, the town would have any um, liability in that. I mean, the town provided water to the, to the point where the hydrant is. And if the wells fail, then you just put in the line and bite the bullet. And it would happen automatically. I guess they'd split or whichever way it would be the cost. I think Lisa's point, which isn't a bad one, is that in, if cases have come up before, Maureen mentioned where the voting citizens of the town who had a problem came in and said, you guys have to help us, it wouldn't hurt, I suppose, if you say, well, look, this situation was recognized you were granted relief from the obligation to run water you know your problem you fix it um, yeah but I, you I wouldn't think, i don't think it changes the, the legal obligation at all but it, it creates a political environment if you will that might be a little bit easier to handle 
I don't feel strongly either way. I just say it's hard for me to imagine that if these people's wells failed and they came to me to help them, I would dig up the site plan and say, no, I'm not going to help you because <laughs> you have this note here. I mean, I'm either going to help them or not. And I just, I'm a, I don't like to have a lot of extraneous stuff on these drawings. You know, there's already enough information on them. So I feel like if, unless it's really, really needed, I would prefer not to have it. And Henry, you I were? I prefer not to have it. Okay, so um, I, as I look at this, um, I, I agree with the point that you're making that I, I do wish they were going public. I can see why they're going with the private, with their well. Um, I agree that if any de further development occurs that we are um, planning for that with the lines there, possibly. Um, but I will go back to um, it's their responsibility that if the wells fail for them to do something and putting it, something in the site plan, I'll have to go a little bit with, more with Joe's argument is, is that it would be very temporary if the town was to do something and I would like to think that we do turn to our town especially when there's a crisis, that's when the, the towns do their best work. And I don't wish to just point the fingers. It sort of reminds me of the people who have to pay taxes to have the fire department put out fires in their home, and if they don't buy insurance or pay the taxes, they, they'll let them burn down in front of them. It just doesn't feel good. So I, I just feel that we can go with just the, the well. I feel comfortable with that. Yeah. So. My issue wasn't temporary water, it was digging the trench to mm. establish a long-term public water supply, which could be $100,000 plus. Then so I think that, they need to come in for a site thing. plan just, just for the record. I would think that temporarily the town would do something to help people out. Once again, that's where towns do step in. But I, I don't imagine that the applicants would look to the town to um, pay the cost of this and actually dig it. I could see Henry's point of laying those lines uh, to think of this worst case scenario. Um, I, I don't, they would have to come back for site plan amendment if, they've, if all their wells fail and they want to go with the public water. I don't see the town just saying, oh, we'll pick up that tab. Anyways, okay. Any other comments? <laughs> Okay, at this point, would anyone like to uh, make a motion? Thank you, Pete. Uh, motion from the board to consider the findings of fact. <coughs> One, Phil Jordan and Chelsea Hughes and Scott Butterfield, owner of Rock One, are requesting amendments to the previously approved Jordan Farm subdivision to shorten the length and change the length of the pond road and eliminate the public water line, which requires review under section, section 1625 amendments to the previously approved subdivisions in the subdivision ordinance. The town engineer is recommending changes to the plan to clarify grading and pavement thickness. The subdivision ordinance requires that a performance guarantee be provided to ensure that proposed improvements are constructed in accordance with the approved plans. Four, the applicant has substantially addressed the standards of the subdivision ordinance, section 16.3.1. Therefore, we have ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Philip Jordan and Chelsea Hughes and Scott Butterfield, owner of Lot 1, for amendments to the previously approved Jordan Farm subdivision to shorten the length and change the grade of Occupy Road and eliminate the public water line be approved, subject to the following conditions. One, the plans be revised to address the recommendations of the town engineer's letter dated May 6, 2014. Two, that the performance guarantee be posted in accordance with section 16.27.C prior to any alteration of the site and any other additions to the building permit for lots two and three. Three, the plans be revised and submitted to the town review, town planner for review and approval prior to the recording of the subdivision plan. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Joe. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion? All those that oppose the motion? The motion has passed. Thank you.
Number four, the item on our agenda is the well, a 44-seat restaurant site plan and Jordan Farm stand site plan amendment. Jason Williams is requesting the site plan review of the well, a 44-seat restaurant located at 21 Wells Road, because the well site plan anticipates sharing parking spaces with the Jordan Farm stand parking area. An amendment to the Jordan Farm stand site plan will also be concurrently reviewed. The application has been deemed complete and a public hearing has been scheduled for this evening. The application will be reviewed for compliance with section 19-9 site plan regulations. This item will be addressed in the following format. The town planner will provide an overview of the summary after which the applicant will summarize any changes to the plan. The public is then welcome to comment on the amendment and after public comment the board will begin discussion concluding with a motion for the board to consider. As soon as Maureen is completed over there, we'll start this item. Okay, so tonight uh, the board has uh, scheduled a public hearing for the well. Uh, the well is a 44 seat restaurant and some of the parking and other facilities for the restaurant are going to be borrowed or shared with the Jordan farm stand. So the Jordan farm stand site plan is also being amended as part of this application. Uh, one of the, most of the well improvements are already in place. There's a few um, walkways and composting toilet and minor things that have to be included. So the recommendation from staff is just to make sure that all the remaining improvements be completed before the restaurant opens for this season. Thank you. Okay. Would the applicant like to summarize any changes to the plan at this time? Todd Gammon, Blaze Civil Engineers. I'm here tonight to hopefully get final approval for the site plan for the well. The applicant and owner, Jason Williams, is here with me tonight as well um, to review some of the changes since the April 15th meeting. One of the comments at the, the last board meeting were the the first five parking spaces here, I've now provided a five foot separation. It was originally three feet. The back employee parking lot, where we're gonna have six employee parking spaces, there was a requirement for a 10 foot paved apron. This has been added and there's been a detail showing the build up for the gravel and the, and the required pavement depth per the, the town standard. Um, there's also a few notes that have been added per the town engineers letter related to a, an after the fact driveway permit for the employee parking and also the fact that uh, street opening permits required since that is in the right of way that's been added to the site plan. We're now showing adjacent to the farm stand the porta potty location that was discussed last time that is shown with a sink and we have the one composting toilet waterless system with a sink that's shown here to get the two that Ben and I had uh, there was some discussion during the last meeting about the the wastewater and the uh, the toilet portion of this and we've come to an agreement um, I do have to add as a condition one more note Ben really wanted me to focus on the fact that this was a mobile restaurant on wheels and that that's going to be highlighted on this plan that was the the only note that was uh, that came from the town. The, the town engineer, Steve Harding, signed off. He had no comments on his last engineering peer review letter. Um, so we will add that. That, I believe, was the only changes since the April 15th meeting. I think I'd mentioned it at the last meeting. There was an updated letter that was provided in the in the latest submission, which just 
the wetlands were flagged down closer to Spurwink just to prove that there would be no uh, wetlands disturbance and that was verified in the field. Um, and also the zoning, the space and bulk, bulk table was updated to clarify some comments on the 22 parking spaces. Um, it's more, it is not shared parking, it is a shared parking lot. There's no, there is one hour of overlap between the farm stand hours and the well. The well is open from five to nine. The well will have 11 spaces. The farm stand will have five. Therefore, we've shown 16 here and there's six space, spaces for the employees for the grand total of 22 and that was reflected in the, the uh, space and bulk table. Um, Steve Harding had a comment on that last time. <laughs> I think that was the only comments. Again, the, the latest letter from the town was that the engineer had signed off and there was no other um, conditions other than the fact that it had to be, obviously these improvements had to be made before he opened for the season. So we're happy to hopefully the, the package before you reflects all the comments from the last board meeting and any of the recent ones. Okay, at this time I do have to open this to the public. So I am opening the public hearing. Does anyone have any comments about this agenda item? And seeing none, I'm now closing it. Does anyone on the board have any questions or comments for the applicants? Yes. There was some talk at the last meeting, I believe, about uh, overflow parking across the street in the area where they have the, the mulch and, and uh, mm -hmm. building the travel and custom. Is that is that still a live possibility or is that a Yep, no, we're not planning anything across the street. Not, at this time, it's not planned, but it's the, there is space available should it be needed from experience? <clears throat> um, I don't believe that's the, is that the plan still, Jason, if you had to use that? I'm not sure how often you've had to use the overflow, but. Jason, if you, I gotta make a stand yeah, up. Sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. Need to introduce yourself. I'm Jason Williams, Noel Jordan Farms, um, presenting. We have never used the overflow parking before. I don't see a situation arising that we're going to. I think, if anything, I'll be able to pace things out more so that we won't have any kind of traffic issues that would require us to go across the street. Um, that being said, I don't know how we could, I mean, after they've closed, I don't know how we can't like police people not parking there, but, <laughs> but we're not planning on using it for anything. So. One of the things I'll mention is that this year is going to be the first year that you've gone to a reservation-based system for the most part. More reservations. So yeah. more reservations, is going to, it's going to spread out the need for any parking. And, and you had a write-up in Downey's Magazine, I believe, your, your fame is spreading, so you know, <laughs> looking ahead, you may have more people coming to your front door. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Everybody wants to eat at 6.30, too, it seems like, so. <laughs> Uh, Maureen, if there was an issue with uh, the need for overflow, do they come back and, and, or get a letter from the owners? Um, how does that normally happen? Well, they, they're meeting the current parking requirement. Yeah. So, I, I mean, it would have to be a truly egregious safety violation that we've never seen have in Cape get so bad that it would somehow trigger going back to the planning board. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was asking out of curiosity more than the need to see Yes, Liza. I have one question regarding the town engineer's letter about the turnaround for the fire truck, saying that um, the one provided is 22 feet, the standard is 24, requires the fire chief. No, that's the that's the next project, Harvest Lane. Oh, thank you. Sorry, <laughs> no questions. Okay. Then. Like, what turnaround? <laughs> <laughs> and I will comment on it. <laughs> Does anyone have any other comments on this? Then at this time, would anyone like to make a motion? Anyone like to make a motion? Henry, thank you. Oh, and Henry, before you make the motion, um, there is a typo on page four. Okay. Instead of reading out the typo and then asking to amend the motion, why don't we just, um, on page four, number two, it would end at the word regulations. Everything after the word regulations. 
Up at, at number two, oh. the top one. I'm sorry, there's two number twos on that page. The top one, Henry. I'm sorry. The number two at the top page. Okay. After the word regulations. Okay. Just end right. there. Okay. Rather than a comma. Yeah. Do you want anything else after that? No, just cross it just all out. Everything should be crossed out. Big fat mistake. Okay. And I'm sorry for the interruption, but. All right, you ready? Yes, thank you. This will get to the, to the market. Motion for the board to consider finding a fact. Jason Williams is proposing the well, a 44 seat restaurant located at 21 Wells Road, which requires review under Section 19 9 site plan regulations because the wall site plan anticipates sharing parking spaces with the Jordan Farm Stand parking area. An amendment to the Jordan Farm Stand site plan is also proposed. The application, the application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that, based on the plan and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Jason Williams for site plan review of the well at 44 seat restaurant located at 21 Wells Road and an amendment to the Jordan Farm Stand site plan to expand the parking area be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that a note be added to the plans that the approve, approval is based on a mobile restaurant. If the restaurant becomes immobile based on determination by the code enforcement officer, then the planning board approval should be amended. Two, that all the improvements shown on the planning board approved plan be completed prior to the restaurant opening to customers for the 2014 season. A determination that all improvements have been completed shall be based on an inspection by the code enforcement officer or a third party who shall submit an inspection report to the code enforcement officer for approval. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Thank you. Joe. Sure. Um, any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? And the motion is passed. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is the Harvest Lane Private Road Amendment. Nick Tamaro is requesting an amendment to the previously approved Harvest Lane Private Road to extend the road to provide adequate frontage for a second lot. The application was deemed complete and a public hearing has been scheduled for this evening. The plan will be reviewed under Section 16-2-3 of the Subdivision Ordinance. And this item will be addressed in the following format. The Town Planner will provide an overview of the item, after which the applicant will summarize any changes to the plan. The public then is welcome to comment on the amendment. After public comment, the board may begin discussion, concluding with a motion for the board to consider. Sure. Um, the proposal is basically to add a second lot to an existing private road. Uh, the applicant has amended the plans to upgrade the private road to meet the current private road standards. Uh, there, the creation of the second lot will eliminate access to the adjacent Maxwell Farm, which is vacant land. And I bring that up because that is sometimes a consideration by the board. However, the Maxwell Farm does have uh, abundant frontage on Sawyer Road and Spurwink Ave, so the board may want to not see this as a great loss for that vacant land. Uh, the proposal from staff is to make sure that there is a review of all the legal documentation. There is a, a, a drainage easement, a road maintenance agreement, and some kind of legal conveyance that guarantees that lot two, the new lot, has access over Harvest Lane, which is a private road. And then finally, there is also a recommendation for a performance guarantee to make sure that the proposed road is constructed according to the plans and is inspected. Thank you. The applicant's um, representative would like to make a summarization of the changes. Again, Todd Gammon, Blaze Civil Engineers. I'm here tonight with Nick Tamro and his dad, Jim, the applicants. Some of the changes since the last meeting and the, uh, the site walk that we held, we did increase the width of the road to the 22-foot 
wide uh, town road standard. We also added a note that the paved entrance had to be a total of 50 feet. There's existing 10, so we added four, 40 more feet. Um, we also added a bit, bituminous Cape Cod curbing at the entrance right off Valley. There's going to be a radius of curbing <laughs> town standards as well. One of the comments from the Mr. Harding was the addition of a plunge pool at the culvert. Originally I had a riprap outlet, now it's just a depressed area to um, help to uh, decrease some, some of the velocity of the flow of the water. That was added and a detail was added to the plan. The right away stub to the left that we're creating, that is, that is now 22 feet. The catch basin in the existing ditch um, with the added width, I added a riser onto that to bring that up to grade. There'll also be a little bit of grading in that area to promote positive drainage into that existing basin. We've also provided a draft maintenance access easement agreement for the town attorney to review, which gives the town the ability to maintain as needed if, if required. Also a draft drainage easement, 20 foot wide, um, was provided to the town also for the town attorney to re review. That was per the request of uh, Bob Malley because one of the adjacent basins on Valley Road has a pipe that discharges into the existing ditch. He just wanted to make sure that he could maintain that flow in perpetuity down the ditch and also the cross pipe. So that's now be, been shown with meets and bounds and also an exhibit that was provided. Um, a finalized septic system design, HHE 200 was submitted. And I believe that was everything in the last submission. We also added a note related to um, that the maintenance of the road is not the responsibility of the town. That was one of the other requests. And we also updated some of the, uh, an error we caught on some of the survey math on, on the survey drawing. So, um, but everything that you saw on the 15th related to the plans, nothing has changed. Happy to take questions. Okay. Once again, I, this is uh, up for a public hearing. So at this point, I'd like to open the public hearing. Does anyone wish to comment at this time? How you doing, members? Um, my name is Byron Castro. I own the house that's going to be on the corner of Harvest Lane and the new proposed road behind our house, which is on 29 Valley. Um, I'm going to read a small statement and then follow up a little bit if I could. Um, first and foremost, we're not against any of the proposed plans for the Tamaros building the house behind us. Um, we're actually looking forward to it. Um, our two biggest concerns, and I've heard one of them seems to be answered, but I want to make sure it's publicly aware that we really do not want to make this road extended any further. We don't want to have come back in six more years or three more years, and there's going to be an alternative extension put up further down into the third lot behind the Tamaro, somewhere along the line. Um, so we basically want the road to end here at this point. We knew um, during the last committee that it would be a private road access to have ability to have possibly one house. That was the way it was conveyed to us with Nick. And um, the way it was proposed, it was hopefully only going to be one house. It may be a proposed to be extension to Nick's farm. So we really didn't oppose the farm being built at that point, but we want to hold that accountable that it will not ever build be another house built and make sure that that's really, uh, you know, stressed pr permanently. Uh, we are totally against any type of paving of the road. Um, 
other than the 50 feet. We don't want to see any curb ins or any sidewalks or anything else. We're trying to keep this characteristic to be as less uh, uh, aggressive, I guess, or whatever word you want to use, that it looks like a road or a highway going down behind, uh, to the side or behind us. Um, being one of the few, if not the only house in Cape Elizabeth being bordered by three streets, we're really looking for some type of buffer between our backyard and the proposed road going behind there, some type of trees. Uh, you know, we'd like to see that in some type of the plan. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can guarantee that, but they are going to be taking, there's a large leaf oak tree or pine tree right on the corner they have to take out because of drainage. We just like to see some trees bordering our property versus the road going in there. Um, is one of the, the things that we'd like to see. I'm not sure if it's something that the planning board can put on there, uh, but we do see where you are altering these plans from the road conditions that we were hoping that we would see some type of buffer in between there. Um, and if it does get to have to be paved all the way through behind us, I think you're creating something that I think has to be more to the rest of the neighborhood because this road continues, you're not just affecting our house lot or the one next to it or the ones three behind it, you're affecting 40 other houses. So again, we really want to see this downgraded as much as possible, willing to go forward to what we hear, but we do request that the road not be able to be expanded and there's some type of buffer we'd like to see. I appreciate taking the time. Um, like I said, thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Does anyone else from the public wish to speak on this item? Seeing no one, I'm going to close the public hearing and maybe we can address some of these questions. Um, I did hear, I know the plans don't show um, the, the, any sidewalks, any curbings, uh, and so to that point, um, you would actually have to come back and ask for those, because they're not on the plan, but can right. you address about extending this uh, to a third possible lot, thoughts on that, what may be in the plan, about the paving, any sidewalks and possibly buffering between the Castro's property and the Camaros. Yeah, there's no intention to do any paving beyond the 50 foot that's shown here. The pavement will end this area. It will be all gravel. We're, we're, as Mr. Castro mentioned, we're trying to keep the rustic appeal as, most, as best we can. Uh, no intention for sidewalks or curbing or uh, the Tamaros are on board with limiting that, any of that work. There's no plans for a third lot. Um, as Maureen mentioned, there's, we're not providing any access way easement out to the back. Um, this will be, you know, Nick and his dad will be abutting each other. They, the, the, the plan will not be for any third lot in that area. Half of the lot that um, we've carved out is RP2 wetlands. You're not going to have an option to do anything in that corner anyway. We've p picked an upland area uh, for that exact reason. Um, in terms of the buffer, um, I think on the mention on the site walk, I mentioned that the intent is to keep all the trees that we can as possible for the driveway up through. As part of the private right of way, this stub to the left only goes out about 40 feet. It'll be 40 by 22. There's no intention to take anything um, beyond that if we don't have to. I obviously have to get this drainage culvert in, so there'll be a little bit of grading associated with that riprap inlet, but. Um, their intention is to retain as many trees as possible. As far as um, buffering goes, if this had been a subdivision, then the board could have a discussion about you adding mm -hmm. buffering. The board can't ask you to add buffering, but um, is there any consideration of possibly adding, adding additional trees or anything by the applicant on the behalf of the Castros? We don't show any on the plans. I'd have to defer to the Tamaros to see if they would be open to that. But um, as you saw on the site walk, it's heavily wooded now, and they have very little intention of, you know, they're, they're hoping to take as, as few as they have to. But I would have to right. defer to the applicant. <clears throat> right. So any of the other changes would all have to come back for site plan review. And um, Maureen, can you add a little bit about trying to um, get access to a third lot if there was about the size of the lots. Sure, absolutely. And, and I, I need to 
you know, been doing this for a while and people are really creative, so I never say nothing can ever happen, and I'm just going to be clear about that. Um, but if you can pull a site plan up, um, thank you. As you, I mean, if you can point to the end of the private road, Todd. This is the end here. Right, and go up to the northern dead end. There's, there's no other land abutting this private road. It's either land owned by Nick Tamaro or Leanne proposed to be owned by his father. So technically, there's no way more lots could be connected to this road. I would point out that the, the Tamaros have a close working relationship with the Maxwells. And I'm guessing that if for some reason the Maxwells wanted to have access through here, the, the Tamaros would work with them and they could use this road for more access. The question would be why would they want to do that? Because there is a lot of wetlands between here, between the, the Maxwell property and the dead end of the road. So the likelihood of this happening is very, very, very low, especially since the Maxwells have an, a, a tremendous amount of frontage on two other existing town roads. The other point is that both the Tamaro lot and the new lot are 100,000 or are, are right around 100,000 square feet. The minimum lot size in the zoning district is 80,000 square feet. So they are larger than the minimum lot size, but they're not twice as large as the minimum lot size. So there's no opportunity for either one of these lots to further subdivide. Does that answer your question? Yes, I, you. I hope that does help um, answer the questions that we've heard. Um, does the board have any follow-up or questions of their own in regards to this amendment? Yes. Yeah, I just want to follow up for Mr. Um, Castro, um, and it's really to reiterate Victoria's point that if there had been three lots made, it, this um, subdivision would be subject to the subdivision ordinance, and we would have better planning with buffering, and we wouldn't have a road bounding three sides of a property. But unfortunately, because this has just been calved off in one piece and then a, a second piece and not a third, we don't, we don't have that authority. So while, while we heard you, I heard you, there's nothing that we can mandate to address your concerns. Can I say something? No. Um, the public hearing's already been closed. Um, um, but, um, but that might be something that you might be able to have I, because the board can't mandate it. Maybe it's a private discussion that you have with the applicant then at this point. Does the board have any other questions for? I, I have a comment. Yes. I would, like to, I would like to thank that our applicant, if as they take the trees down to put in this driveway, if they're starting to see some sort of more of a clear cut than they originally anticipated, I would certainly hope that, uh, and I, I believe these people to be of such character that they would work with the Castros to improve the buffering. Um, if okay. if the need if the need arises. Thank you for your comment. Anyone else have questions or comments about this amendment? Um, I, I had two comments that I wanted to make then. Um, I would like to have a note added to the plan that the proposed lot be served by public water as it is shown on the plan. Uh, does anyone disagree about adding a note that this go forward with the public water? Could you repeat the chart? Yes, I would like to add a note to the plan that the proposed lot be served by public water. It is shown to be served by public water, and I want to encourage that it is followed through with public water. It's just an additional note on top of the note that um, about the performance guarantee. It's just an additional. Anyone have any comments about adding a note just to ensure that? A note on the form or a condition? It would go on, um, it would be a condition. Well, it would be a note added to the plan that the proposed lot be served by public law as it is proposed. But I just want to spell it right out. Comments? Questions? No? I also wanted to have another note added. And I actually got this note off of um, the Jordan subdivision plan. 
they have a note added on their plan that says the emergency turnaround shall remain clear at all times to provide emergency vehicle access. They have that note. I didn't find any notes on this plan. I know that's the intent. Um, I saw that and I just thought maybe we could add it to this plan. Does anyone have any objections, questions, comments about adding where, that note? Where is the turnaround required at the end of this? It's across, it's across from the yeah, extension. We're going to have to back the truck all the way back down here. Yes. 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 And my last, I would point out, um, you did make a change to the number of notes on your plan. And you removed note number seven. And so you have a note up here on the proposed lot that says RP2 wetlands, see note number 10. Because you removed note number seven, you now want to see note number nine. You see where I'm looking? I'm on, doesn't have a sheet number. Plan of land. And it's on the proposed, there's a note on the proposed lot. Okay. I've got it. Okay, the town planner sees it. She can touch bases with you. Yeah, I can check with that. There, we changed the, uh, there were some notes added, so the sequencing of the, the numbering might not. Right, it doesn't match up. Match the, yep, the I'll check that. A minor, but that was it from me. Anyone else have any other? Yes, Liza. I have one more question. <laughs> Back to the emergency turnaround for the fire truck. Does it meet the B40 standard? It does. Just, okay. Yes. Anyone else? At this time, would anyone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Thank you, Eliza. All right. Um, motion for the board to consider finding a fact. Findings of fact. Nick Tamaro is requesting an amendment to the previously approved Harvest Lane private road to extend the road to provide adequate frontage for a second lot, which requires review under section 16-2-3 of the subdivision ordinance. The town engineer and fire chief have raised concerns with the requested waivers to the road construction standards. The application includes a draft road maintenance agreement and drainage easement, which the town attorney should review. The applicant has substantially addressed the standards of the subdivision ordinance, section 16 dash three dash one. Therefore, I, I guess I have a question <laughs> about the, the findings of fact that have been um, prepared for us. Um, what, what standards of the subdivision ordinance have they substantially addressed? Is this even subject, subject to the road subdivision ordinance? Is the that way what I our road standards are? The way I treat it is they are subject to the Subdivision ordinance standards related to roads. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Okay. So, um, the, so number four, the applicant has substantially addressed the road standards of the subdivision ordinance. I'm going to amend that. Section 16-3-1. Therefore, be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Nick Tamaro for an amendment to the previously approved Harvest Lane private road to extend the road to provide adequate frontage for a second lot be approved subject to the following conditions. Number one, that the plans be revised to address the recommendations in the town engineer's letter dated May 6, 2014. Number two, that any changes to the existing turnaround be depicted on the plan so that the turnaround can accommodate a B40 class vehicle and the, the turnaround may, be, may remain a gravel surface. Um, Number three, that the plans be revised to show a building envelope with a minimum 25-foot setback from the RP2 wetland boundary, except that a smaller setback may be shown for the area near the driveway. A note should be added to the plans that activities outside the building envelope shall be limited to construction of a driveway and installation of utilities. Number four, that a road maintenance agreement, drainage easement, and deeded access for lot two over Harvest Lane be submitted in a form acceptable to the town attorney signed by the applicant and recorded in the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds. Number five, that a note be added to the plan that no changes to the RP2 wetland are proposed in any alteration of the wetland, including conducting agricultural activities in the RP2 wetland, must comply with the wetland regulations, including obtaining a resource protection permit when required by the zoning ordinance. 
Number six, that a note be added to the plan that there shall be no road construction until a performance guarantee has been provided to the town in accordance with section 16-2-6 of the subdivision ordinance. And number seven, that a note be added to the plan stating that lot two will be served by public water. Number eight, that the emergency turnaround be kept clear of snow and vehicles at all times. And number nine, that the plans be revised and submitted to the town planner for review and approval prior to recording the plan. Thank you. Any comments? No? Okay. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Pete. All those in favor? All those opposed? And the motion has passed. Thank you. Thank you. item on our agenda, the All Wives Farms and Fish Market Site Plan. Jody Jordan is requesting a site plan review to replace an existing building with a fish and farm market building, including a kitchen to produce value-added agricultural products to be located at 83 Old Ocean House Road. The application will be reviewed for compliance with Section 19-9 Site Plan Regulations, and this will be addressed in the following format. The town plan will provide an overview after which the applicant will summarize the project. The public is then welcome to comment on the completeness of the plan, and then the board will make determination of completeness. If the plan is determined to be complete, then we'll hold a public hearing tonight, after which the board may begin discussions, including with a motion for the board to consider. So, Maureen, would you like to sure. summarize? Uh, so starting out, there's a checklist. Um, do you want to say something? I do. <laughs> Oh, I'm I just want to go on the record that I am a distant relative of, of Jody's, and I don't feel that that sways me one way or another, but I would bow to the board on whether they would like me to recuse myself or not. Does anyone wish to have Carol Ann recuse herself? You can sit with the board, because that's a no. Goody. <laughs> So, back to checklist. Uh, there's a checklist for completeness. Uh, the staff is not recommending that any items are incomplete. There are some waivers that have been requested. Uh, the lot is a large lot, and the applicant has provided information on the lot line dimensions of, a lot of the line closest to the proposal. Uh, there's also a request of re not showing all the physical features, again, because it's a very large lot, and the physical features close to the, proposal, the proposed site are shown. Uh, it, and there's a request for a waiver from uh, proposed uh, stormwater systems because the proposal is building almost exclusively on an existing footprint. There's very, very little additional impervious surface area which would support not providing additional information on stormwater. And uh, that's it in terms of potential waivers. If the board uh, deems the application complete, then a public hearing has been scheduled for this evening. And uh, the only thing you're getting from staff on that is that the applicant is hoping to build the structure in a phase one and then to fit out the kitchen and connect that kitchen to the existing septic and to a new water line when they put the kitchen in. So the proposal is to treat this as a two-phased approval so that they could put the building up and they could start using it without the connection to water and sewer but that to, and septic, but that once the kitchen is being utilized, that those connections have to happen. Thank you. Would the applicant like to make a presentation at this time? Um, sure. Maureen did a wonderful job <laughs> summing it up. To, um, state who you are. I'm sorry. I'm Caitlin Jordan. I'm here speaking for, on behalf of my father, Jody Jordan, who owns Allies Brook Farm. Um, basically, we have an existing farm stand just down the road at 83 Old Ocean House Road, and we would like to take it down and put up a new one in the exact same place, adding just literally a couple feet so that the buildings are flush and squared off. Um, 
we have proposed doing the, the two phases at this time because the reality of getting our projects up and running, we want to get the, the first building up, get the farm stand working, and then we'll move into phase two, putting in the septic, hooking the, the kitchen up to the septic system. And not too much to it, so I, I don't know how much more I can explain without just answering direct questions. Okay. Um, at this time, then, um, we do need to look at completeness. Mm -hmm. So it, does anyone from the public wish to discuss completeness? Seeing no one, I'll close that and I'll bring it back to the board. Does the board have any questions about whether or not this application is complete for our further review? I'm not seeing any um, comments on that, so would somebody like to make a motion about completeness? Thank you, Carol Ann. Page three. <laughs> motion for the board to con consider. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Jody M. Jordan for site plan review to replace an existing building with efficient farm market building, including a kitchen to produce value-added agricultural products, to be located at 83 Old Ocean House Road be deemed complete. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Joe. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor of completeness? Okay, that was unanimous. All right. Now, um, back to looking at the item in front of us. Um, does anyone now have any questions for the applicant? And then I'll open it up again for public hearing on this. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, I have yes. one question. You submitted a whole bunch of light fixtures. Is there any place where it shows me where those light fixtures are going on the building? The, on the site plan, there's a key that shows that the little circle symbol indicates where the lights are. And the lights, that's the only thing I noticed in your packet that says that those lights are going to be installed. Those lights are installed. They've been in existence for maybe two decades. So they're, they're not anything new. They already exist. There'll be no additions. They won't even be touched during the deconstruction and construction. They're already existing on the... So they're existing on the part that's being rebuilt and additionally... They're, they're on, right, they're on other buildings, all other existing buildings. No additional lighting will be put in. All set, Joe? Yep. Any other questions? I, I just wanted to clarify, um, I know you were saying that you're going to, for the parking, uh, put down lines. Mm -hmm. Curb stops? With I, I, was, uh, I was under the impression that just lines was enough okay. as, I, a, as a I curb stop. I mean, the building itself will be, if, if somebody doesn't stop at the line, we're in trouble. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify. That yeah. That's fine. Yep. Anyone else on the board? I'm gonna, yes. Yeah. Just a question, the, the two-phase aspect of this, uh, is that really taken care of by the condition that they can't use the kitchen until it's hooked up? I mean, there's, they won't be back for any approvals, for sure. That, that was my intent. Right. But if you, if you put that condition on there, it kind of makes it pretty clear. And I did speak to the code officer about it. He felt the condition would cover what we were trying to accomplish. So they could use the new structure for uh, selling farm products and whatnot, it's just the running the kitchen itself has to be... Right. The, until phase two, the, the structure is dry. Right. Okay. Do you wanna... Right, because just a clarification as for the use. I mean, it's a, it's a prep room. So, I mean, we'll be using the room, but we won't be having any water or, you know, any, there won't be any water going through that building, that, that room, until we hook up to septic. Okay, if the board doesn't have any further questions, I'm going to open this to the public. Does the public have any comments on this item? And seeing none, I'm closing the public hearing. Then if the board does not have any further questions tonight, then because it is a public hearing, we're going to ask for a motion then for approval. Would anyone like to make that motion? Thank you, Joe. A motion for approval, findings of fact. Jody M. Jordan is requesting the site plan review to replace an existing building 
of the fish and farm market building, including kitchen, to produce value-added agricultural products to be located at 83 Old Ocean House Road, which requires review under Section 19.9 site plan regulations. The applicant is proposing to construct the building and then in Phase 2 to install a kitchen and connect to water and an existing septic system. Three, the application <coughs> substantially complies with Section 19.9 site plan regulations subject to the information, the submission of information referenced in number two above. Therefore, be in order that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Jody and Jordan for site plan review to replace an existing building with a fish and farm market building, including a kitchen, to produce value-added agricultural products to be located at 83 Old Ocean House Road and be approved, subject to the following condition. One, that the building connection to public water line and to the existing septic system must be completed before the proposed kitchen is utilized. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion? Yes. I am making a request that under item three of the findings of fact, you end it with regulations and delete that mistake that the staff put in there. <laughs> the refers to two. Thank you. That is okay with the second or of the motion. That's fine with Carol Ann. Okay. Then, anyone um, in uh, favor of this? Those in favor? Okay. And the motion has passed. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, the BA District 100 seat restaurant zoning amendment. Uh, the Town Council has asked the Planning Board to consider an amendment to the BA District to increase the maximum number of seats in a restaurant from 80 to 100. This will be reviewed under Section 19-10-3, Zoning Ordinance Amendment, and this is scheduled for a public hearing. And this item will be addressed. Um, the town planner will provide a summary. The public is then welcome to make comments. After public comment, the board will begin discussion and concluding with a motion for the board to consider. So this is the record for the uh, least amount of letters in a zoning amendment that I've ever processed. Um, the current ordinance in the BA district limits the number of seats in a restaurant to 80 seats so we need to take the 80 out and replace it with 100 for 100 seats um, I just want to make clear that the process is that if a, after the planning board makes a recommendation to the council then this goes to the council the council will process this amendment further they also hold a public hearing uh, if the amendment is adopted then any restaurant in the BA district needs to come back to the planning board and amend their site plan approval because there is no restaurant currently that has approval for 100 seats because it's not allowed. So any, it would still require any restaurant in that district to come back and amend their approval and the planning board would look at that. Any questions? Thank you. Um, you did bring up public comment and we did receive a letter to um, the effect um, on May 12th indicating that um, a citizen is against increasing the seating limit in the area from 80 to 100 seats. Um, at this time, I would like to open this to um, the public. Would anyone like to address this item? And we have somebody coming up, and you need to state your name. This is a public hearing that will last for 15 minutes. Each applicant, uh, excuse me, each individual will be given three minutes to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chris Straw. I live at 597 Shore Road. I live approximately a block away from the Shore Road BA District. Uh, I want to begin by just saying thank you all for volunteering your time. I know uh, this board takes a lot of your time. I'd like to make two points uh, very quickly. Number one, the process uh, that should be followed when considering changes to zoning ordinances. And number two, uh, applying the process to the issue before you. So uh, I'm a former member of the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, and as you may know, the ZBA board members are routinely called on to review and interpret numerous sections of the zoning ordinance. And in doing so, I found it helpful to keep in mind when considering an issue, the process board members are supposed to follow. 
In particular, the various provisions of the zoning ordinance contain purpose provisions at the beginning. These purpose provisions are extremely, extremely important. They were not created in a vacuum, but are instead derived from the Cape Elizabeth Master Plan, which was approved by the citizens, all of us in this room, everyone else out around town. The citizens approved the Cape Elizabeth Master Plan through a townwide vote. In other words, the purpose provisions are broad brush instructions from us, the town, as a whole, to the town council, the planning board, and various town employees as to what the ordinance is supposed to accomplish. As such, when the ZBA considers how to interpret an ordinance, it must take into account the purpose articulated in the ordinance for the, the different provisions in the ordinance. Similarly, when the planning board considers proposed revisions to the ordinance, the board first and foremost must consider whether your decision furthers the purpose of the various disti districts as that purpose is articulated in A, the zoning ordinance, and B, the town's master plan. So that bears repeating. Whenever considering a revision to the zoning ordinance, first and foremost, the question in your mind should be, is this proposed change in keeping with the purpose of this district and the town's master plan? Although reasonable minds may differ on the outcome of that question in any given case, and often do, hopefully that question is not up for debate. Hopefully we can all agree that that is the primary question. Is this change in keeping with the purpose of this district and the purpose as articulated in the town's master plan? Because that's why we're all here. With that in mind, I'll turn to the proposed change very quickly. The master plan states that goal number two, the neighborhood commercial district shall be designed to meet the needs of the adjacent neighborhoods. Not the town as a whole, not the greater Portland area, the needs of the adjacent neighborhoods. Number two, the zoning ordinance states that the BA district requirements seek to, quote, protect the integrity of the adjacent residential neighborhood. Which goes to the point of, is an increase in the permitted seating to 100 seats in keeping with the purpose of the business A district? I can't speak to the Ocean House Road BA district, but with respect to the Shore Road district, there are a variety of comparable, pro comparable properties we can look at. David's 388, Enio's, Ellesmere Barbecue, all in South Portland. I don't believe any of them have anywhere near 100 seats. I can't think of a single restaurant anywhere near the BA district that has anything close to 100 seats. Moreover, I hope none of us would desire to have the Shore Road BA district look anything like the South Portland section of Shore Road. Instead, I hope we are aiming for something more similar to Willard Square. Can you imagine a 100-seat restaurant in Willard Square? It's just, it, it's incompatible with the district. As such, even if you think 100 seats is okay on Ocean House Road, which may or may not be, I would urge you to keep the limit in place for the Shore Road uh, section of the BA district. After all, the zoning ordinance explicitly states the, uh, in the ordinance, Quote, the Business A District regulations recognize that the BA District in the Shore Road area and the BA District in the Ocean House Road area are individually distinct and may require different treatments which are specified herein. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Yes, certainly. Feel free to approach as people have questions. My name is Dan Bowen. My wife, Pat, and I have lived on Hunts Point Road for 22 years. Um, I came here to speak on behalf of the good table, but it seems that this is a broader issue. So I'll say, I'll keep my comments uh, short. In those 22 years that we've lived here, a big chunk of that time, we've been customers of the good table. And I have never seen a problem that the number of tables they had our table or chairs that they had uh, caused any kind of a problem for the neighborhood. I can't speak to the Shore Road situation, but as a, as a neighbor of uh, the, the, the Route 77 area, I don't see any issue. I, I, I would uh, encourage you to vote in favor of uh, increasing to 100 seats. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I'm Mary Otulikowski. I'm the former owner of Rudy's of the Cape, no, lo lo located at 517 Ocean House Road, directly next door to the good table. I wrote the letter regarding this issue in June 2013, over a year ago. This is nothing personal against the good table. Tony, Lisa, Sylvia, the good table is a fabulous restaurant. Nothing against them. 
what I was told when I purchased my property and had a site plan, that this is an RP1 wetland, and that I had to be 150 feet from that wetland, and I couldn't do anything to my business, to my restaurant. I couldn't mow the lawn. I couldn't remove invasive vines. I couldn't do anything. If I did, the uh, code enforcement officer was at my door, along with uh, the DEP, the EPA, and the town threatening to fine me for what I was doing. Um, also, when I did have the site plan review done, that cost me thousands of dollars. Um, I was greeted by the wonderful neighbors who um, did not want this wetland touched. Um, there were vernal pools, there's other wetland issues, and they dragged me through months of site plans, of reviews, of meetings that, again, cost me thousands of dollars. And amazingly enough that those people, Gail Schmader, Joe Foley, Morris Kratz, they aren't here tonight. And we're talking about the same wetland, just a different business. That's all it is. And so last June, when I noticed that the cattails were mowed down and the parking lot was increased, it was kind of, it wasn't right that how can they do this in an RP1 wetland buffer zone? And so this issue is not about the seeding. It's about the, wet, the wetland that's there. And the town has let other issues go on with other businesses for years without consequences to their actions. And it's amazing that Rudy's next door, 100 feet from the good table, had to be torn down, moved 25 feet, now it's no longer in the BA wetland zone because there's five existing buildings in a 100-foot radius. But the good table is in this wetland zone. So this is why I'm wondering that how the town picks and chooses what people can do and what others can't do. I spent about $25,000 on site plans, architects, topical reviews. I spent years in meetings. I spent in public and private meetings, ridiculed, beaten down, and I don't understand how this wetland has been forgotten. Is it, is it gone? Is it not there anymore? I don't believe so. And I seriously think that someone needs to look at this bigger issue here. And I know the summer season's upon us, and I know the tourists are our livelihood, and, but I wrote this letter a year ago, and that something should have happened in this time, and why hasn't it been pursued? Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kate Stewart, and I really wish I would have gone before her. Um, I just wanted to talk briefly in support of the Good Table's request for more seating, because that was it's my understanding of the issue. Um, I think it makes good business sense for this town. We're fortunate to have a place like the Good Table in Cape Elizabeth for our tax base, for our out-of-town guests, um, and for ourselves. Additional seating means less wait time, doesn't require any change to the footprint is my understanding. Um, and after all these years of making themselves valued, member of, valued members of this community, um, I think they deserve the benefit of the doubt and the opportunity to be as successful as possible. Um, on a quick personal note, uh, my husband and I and two children have been regulars for 10 years at the good table. Um, we count on fabulous food, friendly faces. We are known um, to Lisa and her staff as family, and my kids especially love that. And they create a warm atmosphere, and I'm proud they're in Cape Elizabeth, and I'd like to see them be as successful as possible. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Okay, then I will be closing the public hearing at this time. Okay, now I'll be bringing it back to the board. Um, any comments from the board in regards to, we are looking at increasing this from 80 seats to 100 seats. Yes, Henry. Henry, could you use your microphone, please? Sure. Thank you. I just wanted to make a comment to the first gentleman that said that when he asked if we could imagine a seat restaurant in any area. Well, it seems that the good table has been fairly successful. So, and uh, therefore, it's easy to imagine a restaurant that grows and requires to grow. And so they must be doing something correct. And 
so if a restaurant is successful and wants to expand, um, then it's easy to imagine. If it, if, it, if it didn't fit in with the surroundings, then they wouldn't want to expand. So more or less you answered the question yourself by asking why they would do that. I, unfortunately, you can't react to my, to my words, but I want to just say that it doesn't pass over the top of my head. I do listen to what you have to say. Um, personally, I think that I also live very close to there, and I don't think it makes any um, significant change to the atmosphere of any particular area. In fact, if anything, a restaurant which is successful, you meet neighbors, you see neighbors, it adds to the community base um, from a, uh, which is a, which, that's that comment. And uh, in response to the other lady that, uh, that used to own Rudy's, um, we're not considering something to do with wetlands tonight. It's just purely an extension of an existing building wanting to extend or those areas to be able to put up a larger restaurant or expand the restaurant if, if necessary. So that was my comment. Thank you, Henry. Does anyone else have any? Yes. The government's book, First <coughs> Shore Road, uh, made a, a good point, particularly with respect to the BA district on Shore Road. I just wanted to mention that this, we, we thought a lot about that very point. Um, the, um, the, the discussion was, we, we know the people that this is not a lot big of the discussion, it's fairly obvious. Um, at the same time, the number of people who have been in this building is really a lot of the function of the what kind of audience the rest of the wants to have. You can have a, a lot of space uh, between tables and, and few seating. You can have a traditional Chinese restaurant where everything is all squished together. Um, we think the most important variable on restaurant size, from our perspective, is parking, which is driven by the number of seats. But without imposing a limit on the number of seats, we look at the one way to look at it is how much parking is there. And is that what we should be looking at? Uh, I personally am not sure that we have any business talking about the interior layout of the restaurant. Uh, the fire marshal certainly does to make sure that it's, the public safety is being met by having sufficient space and exits and so forth. Uh, I think our perspective is more oriented towards traffic flow uh, from the street to the to the parcel, traffic flow within the parcel, pedestrian flow within the parcel, um, other uh, criteria of that nature. And indeed, in, in some towns, we discussed it here, was, is there any point in having a limit on restaurant seating, period? Some towns don't. We look to parking as being the, the variable that they control. Um, but we, we did think seriously about the uh, the VA district up in Shore Road, and was there a risk that you could have some humongous restaurant go in there? It really doesn't seem possible. Um, this particular establishment, uh, Good Table, uh, is talking about a uh, seating increase within the footprint of the building, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and I'm also under, led to understand that it's mainly due to seasonal demand, summer traffic. Um, so your, your, your point, sir, was certainly a good one, and it certainly has been considered. And we're, we're not sure that it comes to bear directly on the question of whether the, the zoning uh, seating capacity should be 80 or 100 or 92. Uh, I personally think it's, I mean, it's the bigger picture that we have to focus on is, is parking, traffic, and pedestrian flow. Thank you very much. I want to respond to um, people's comments. First was Mary. I'm sorry, I didn't get your last name. Um, I'm sympathetic to your points. I, I, I heard that you feel like um, the ordinance has not been consistently applied. And I, while I don't know the specifics, of what you're talking about. Um, 
I think it's very important in this town that we actually enforce the ordinance because when it's done for some and not for others, it breeds really hard feelings. And I think it might even scare away businesses. It's not good for economic development if the law is not uniformly applied. So um, just in general, that I feel very strongly that we should enforce the ordinance. Um, and secondly, um, Chris Straw, um, thank you for your comments on process. I think process is so important. Um, it is what provides integrity to the process, to, to what we do and how we govern ourselves. And um, I have gone back and looked at the comprehensive plan um, before this meeting because as all the board members know, um, state law is that any restrictive um, zoning has to be consistent with the comprehensive plan. And the process is that a town, through um, a democratic process, puts together a comprehensive plan, and then restrictive zoning laws are written to be consistent with that. And um, I agree, it's up to interpretation and exactly where that lies. Is it at 80 or 100? But um, I did see in the comprehensive plan that it talked about the two districts as being distinct. And so initially in our workshop, when I was for um, treating them um, together as one, it was because of the appearance of spot zoning. So changing the ordinance narrowly um, to favor one particular business. I'm still <laughs> very wary of doing that. But I agree the comprehensive plan says that there are two distinct districts. But um, I also see that in the comprehensive plan it talks about small businesses connected to the surrounding neighborhoods with sidewalks and serving the surrounding neighborhoods. And, and that is something I think that we need to be, pay very close attention to. And I also think we're very vulnerable to allegations of spot zoning if we consider changing this to 100 seats for the request of one applicant that's been violating the ordinance just after another applicant invested, I'm guessing, over a million dollars in building a new restaurant that meets the existing ordinance. So um, I guess I just want to say that as well. And I think process here is what is the most important. Um, issue that we are considering, or that we, uh, the thing that we have to keep in mind the most. Thank you, Liza. Does anyone else have any? Yes, come on. I'd like to make a comment, and it has to do with process, and probably the way this, the process of re reviewing this zoning amendment began probably prejudice people to thinking that this is being done to serve one, one citizen, one group. And what we are really trying to do is rise above that and look at the town as a whole. And all restaurants in these VA districts can come back if they have the, the parking capacity and the space. And if, we, if it goes to 100 seats, they can do the same thing that that the good table will have to do, which is come here and say, okay, if, this is, if it goes to 100 seats now, please, can I be 100 seats? If we, perf if we send this to the town council tonight, that doesn't automatically make anybody able to put 100 seats in their restaurant until it's gone through final stages and they come to the planning board. So we've got to let go of the fact that because one business was seeing an increase and they wanted, said, gee, can we increase our capacity? So they made the suggestion. It's the town council who sent us this request. It's not the good table. So let's take it as, a, as something that came from the town council, discount a single business, look at it as would it benefit all businesses potentially within the VA district and go from there and, and take it up a level instead of keeping it down into a single businesses issue because it's not. Yeah, I agree 100% with Carol Ann there. Yes, and part of our discussion, we did look at Rudis to see if they had parking to bring it up to 100. So yes, um, 
we do need certainty when we're looking at long-range planning. We cannot have constant change, especially when somebody has just come before us for site plan review and is investing money at a set number. They do have adequate parking, though, to bring it up to 100. And um, we did look at the question of whether or not Shore Road versus uh, Route 77, as far as treating them similar, treating them differently. Um, the board had a difference of opinion. The overriding rule was to treat them the same. And we did look at uh, possible parking issues because that's what it would once again come down to. And we would look at the lot sizes. Uh, um, we, we, I, I don't have a nice diagram overhead, but we did it. We were at the workshop and we did put in that time to make that consideration. And um, the outcome was um, more people favored treating them similarly. And um, I think that's it I would have on comments on this. I, I just want to speak to what Carol Ann said. So while you're right, the town council came to us and, and asked us to review it, our, the materials we've been given have said that I, this has been initiated by I a particular I I understand party. I understand that, and I guess my point is that's a part where our process broke down, and that should not have been presented in that fashion. It should have been comes from the town council as this is what the town council wants. And it has gone down into this is what the good table wants because they, they came up with the idea. But it's the town council who sent it to us. It's not the good table who sent it to us. OK. So my, my second point is that um, this, after this comprehensive plan was written in 2007, and it was recommended that the ordinance be updated for the BA district. The then planning board, none of us were on it, did exactly that. And they spent a lot of time on rewriting the ordinance. And I'm not sure why, when we haven't even completed doing all of the ordinance changes that are recommended in this comprehensive plan, we're revisiting this. And it's sort of like the planning board equivalent of judicial restraint. I'm just not sure we need to go back and, um, and, and change things that have been done with the existing comprehensive plan. Um, and perhaps we should wait till there's a new comprehensive plan that's done to update mm -hmm. this code. And I've seen um, you can first, and then I'll go back okay. to you. Yeah, Peter. Yeah, I don't think anybody questions whether the process is important or not. I think we have to remember that process that has been followed is really uh, not particularly extraordinary. Going back in time, the code enforcement officer was informed of the problem, talked to uh, the people at the table about it. The solution that they appear to have chosen, and the code enforcement officer is entitled to respect uh, for his decision, is to talk to the town council of Wilkesbury about changing the maximum city requirements. That's a conventional avenue to be followed. It does take into account changing circumstances, which keep changing as the years go by, before and after the comprehensive plan. And so all that has happened since then is the ordinance committee has sent the question to us to advise them on. 80, 100, or some other number. So I, I think the process is intact, it is in place. I do agree with Caroline that the idea first came from the good table situation, but that is that was simply a catalyst. The idea had to start somewhere. We've approached this very carefully, I think, as not being a decision that will to help good table out of the jam. It's a decision to simply look at in the BA districts what should the maximum be, if any. So in my view, the process is intact, and it's pretty wholesome, and uh, I, I don't have a problem with that at all. And, then, well, and Henry, use your mic. Sorry about that. I, I guess I'm looking at the number 80. There's nothing magical about it. I guess it was just an arbitrary number. So I don't think it's in revisiting an ordinance by saying 80, 85, 83, 100. I mean, it's not, it's within the realm. We're not talking about a 400 seat restaurant. That would obviously be out of the realm of 
the the original feeling of the or the original idea of the of the, of the plan. So I think it's just a slight modification of the plan. Obviously, it's 20 percent, I guess, not a huge change. I mean, we go to sales and things are 20 percent off, and we look at it and go, "Wow, it should be 40 percent off or something." I mean, it's an arbitrary number anyway. So I don't believe that we're changing um, the feeling or the business plan or, or any of those things other than just assessing a number slightly differently, which the town council may change dramatically or otherwise. Any final comments? Um, then I would just summarize this by saying um, 100 was reached um, by looking at um, what we have for the BA district, the purpose section. We did look at the two different BA districts. We did look at Rudy's um, because we were asked to look at 100, which means we could have gone and looked at something that was higher or lower. 100 would meet um, Rudy's needs also. Um, and it wasn't an astronomical change like Henry has pointed out. It wasn't. And we are keeping a cap. I don't know how many towns have caps. We have kept a cap on restaurant seating, which is important to point out as we talk about um, purpose statement, which says um, geared towards residents rather than large scale regional destinations. So we have a cap out there. Um, but this is how we did arrive at 100. And if anyone doesn't have any further statements, I'd like to open this. Well, as you know, I wanted 101. But, as you know, I wanted 101, but I was overruled. <laughs> Would anyone like to make a motion? Thank you, Carol Ann. Motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the proposed text and the information presented, the BA District 100 seat zoning amendment be recommended to the town council for consideration. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor? All those not in favor? And the motion has passed. Thank you. At this point, um, item number eight, item, um, next item is public comment. Anything that was not discussed or not on tonight's agenda is now open for public comment. Does anyone here wish to comment on something not on the agenda? Just state your name. Um, for the reasons that I discussed in my email and kind of the comments I made earlier today, I'd like for you to review whether gas stations and repair garages should be outright permitted uses in the BA district. As I explained in my prior communications, the BA district is geared towards residents and it's supposed to be mixed use, which has the concept of housing and business mixed together. I don't think, I hope, <laughs> I imagine none of us want to live above a repair garage or a gas station. There's a reason that I've been unable to identify any residential business districts in the greater Portland area that permit gas stations and repair garages outright. Normally they are at, they're normally banned or otherwise are uh, conditional uses. So I understand that previously they were moved from conditional to permitted because you were basically attempting to eliminate conditional uses throughout the ordinance. But I think, if anything, it should have gone the other direction and it should have been switched to a non-permitted use. So the issue I'd like to raise is I'd like for you guys to bring this up and consider it at one of your future meetings. Uh, yes, I'll go with Maureen and then. Just, just along the whole process, um, it has been the practice of the planning board for some time now not to initiate zoning amendments but to get permission from the council to work on things. So um, it might be more effective for you to request the council refer this to the planning board than the planning board to take the initiative to do it. Understood. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Then the last item is adjournment. Motion we adjourn. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I didn't sorry. recognize. My apologies. I thought you were getting up to leave, which normally happens at this point. Hundred seats. That's great. But I also want to say, we did, we've done some things wrong. There's no question about it. 
but we did not fill in any wetlands. I take full responsibility for what Mary claims that we did next door. Lisa and Tony did not want me to have any trees cut down. There were dead trees sitting on that land, and there were dead vines all over it. I just wanted them to make it look more attractive. We try to make our property look as attractive as possible. We didn't fill any, any uh, wetlands over there. We simply cut down what dead trees were there and what dead vines were there. And that's all that we did to beautify it for the whole area, not just for us. But we did not fill in any wetland. I just want to say that. I want to clarify it. Thank you. I just need to get your name, though. I'm sorry. So Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. And you have a comment, or are you now walking out? <laughs> you want to go home? OK. Thank you. Okay. Now, can I make a motion for adjournment? Yes. Motion for adjournment. Second. Second. All those in favor? And we are adjourned. Thank you.